Using AI to learn new technical topics like how to build AI agents has never been easier, but most people approach this learning process in the wrong way, which leads them to actually learn outdated information, wrong facts, and frameworks that don't actually work at all for the thing that they're trying to build. So in this video, I'm going to give you practical tips as to how you can actually learn any technical topic that you want, taking the example of building AI agents like Claude or GitHub Copilot. Here's the main mistake that most people make. They will open their favorite AI tool, whether it's ChatGPT, Claude, or anything else, and then they'll type in a very generic question like, how do I program an AI agent? And the issue is, is that by relying on these generic AI tools, you're going to get a generic answer. In this case, you can see that it's starting to list out a couple of frameworks and tools together with some core components. The issue is though, how do you really know that whatever the AI system is recommending is actually the up-to-date recommendation and will work for your use case? I think that in order to learn with AI properly, you need to start from a good example. So let's say that we want to build an AI agent for coding. Well, there's a lot of great tools out there, right? Like GitHub Copilot, Claude, Cursor, and more. But aren't a lot of these tools proprietary? How do we get access to their code bases? Well, actually, you'd be surprised by how much open source code there is. And both GitHub Copilot and Claude Code actually have open source projects. If I go to my browser right now, you will actually see that I have the two repositories open, the Claude Code repository, as well as the VS Code Copilot chat extension repo. Now, just for reference, these open source projects are mainly about the user interface that has been open sourced. The language model behind these AI tools is not open sourced. So it's not like you're gonna have access to the raw Claude Sonnet model, but you can build an AI agent that makes use of the model by of course just calling the Anthropic API. So in this case, we're gonna have a look at the Visual Studio Code Copilot chat repository. And if we check out the languages, well, you can already see, hey, this is actually a program that is running on TypeScript. Now, again, that makes a lot of sense because the Visual Studio Code editor is TypeScript on its own. So if you want to build a Visual Studio Code extension, then this already gives you a great hint that you should use TypeScript. Now, a great starting point for using AI to learn how this repository works is, of course, by downloading the repository and opening it in an AI native software development IDE. So in this case, I'm just going to use Visual Studio Code to open this repository. So now that we have this repository cloned, I'm going to be using AI to explain how this repository works to me, which will accelerate my learning process to understand how the user interface for these agents are actually programmed. And this way, you're not going to get a generic answer based on the language model that was trained a half a year or a year ago. You're going to get an in-depth answer based on the latest version of a code base of an actual real AI application that's used by millions of people. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be asking the following question. I want to learn how to create AI agents. For this purpose, I cloned the Copilot chat repo. I want you to investigate this repo and explain how it works from a high level. Afterwards, create a learning markdown document that describes the different components of the repository so that I can learn how it works step by step. Now, the reason why an approach like this is much better is because you're grounding yourself in a real repository instead of asking the AI model to just come up with a random example. And again, you can find sample code for anything. It's not just these AI code tools that have open source repos. You can find an open source repository for any kind of AI system. There really are that many great open source contributors who give all of this information away for free that you can learn from. And what you see now is that Copilot is going to go ahead and check a bunch of different files. And in my case, I'm using Copilot, but you can really use any AI tool that you want, as long as it's one that just directly integrates with the code base so that it can read out the files very easily. And then once it's done with this markdown document, I'll show you what the end result is, and you will see how different the learning experience is going to be when you actually use this approach. Copilot is done, and you can see here on the right that it explains this chat extension is a sophisticated AI agent built around a couple of core components. So it has a multi-agent architecture because you can use Copilot in this chat format, but also as a completion engine inside of the code editor. 
then you have a language model abstraction because it doesn't just support cloth sonnet 4 that's the model i've selected but it actually supports a bunch of other models as well that's indeed true and it has a powerful tool system because copilot can actually call bing web search amongst a lot of other tools and it has mcp server support and you can indeed see here in this markdown document that it has created that there is a deep dive into all of these core components so the difference here is that a ai model like claude or chat gpt when you use it without using an example repository like this might tell you oh, it's a good idea to support multiple AI models, or, oh, it would be great that this AI agent has access to multiple tools, but it's not actually going to explain to you how you can definitely truly implement this using real coding practices. Whereas in this case, if we scroll down here, we'll probably see the tools being explained somewhere. So here's the language model integration, ah, and there you go. Here we have the tool system, and you can actually see in here that it references specific tools that have been implemented in this repository, and so you get real examples of how this is done for a production-grade app. For example, we can check out the terminal state tools. This is a pretty important one because it allows the agent to have access to your terminal. And if we go ahead and search for that, we can actually find inside of all tools that the terminal state tools is imported right here. And I can actually browse to it directly. And you can indeed see that the terminal state tools TypeScript file is defined in here. And of course, I can go and explore this in much more detail to understand how Copilot is actually able to interact with the terminal. And that code is super important because I could be reusing that for a different AI agent that has access to the terminal of my computer, which allows me to do so many different things. And to illustrate that this method really works for any kind of technology, let's go ahead and use the same prompt inside of the Claude code code base to have an idea how different that service really is. So here's the Claude code repository, and I'm actually going to go ahead and paste the same prompt, but then I'm going to slightly change this to, of course, not refer to Copilot chat, but the Claude code repo. Now, Claude Code is a great example of this learning workflow because when this video was recorded, Claude Code actually didn't come out that long ago. And a lot of language models are not even trained on Claude Code's repo contents. Maybe in a couple years from now, the language models will have caught up. But by that point, what they know is already going to be outdated because Cloud Code is being updated continuously. By using this learning method, you're making use of the latest and greatest versions of whatever AI tool you're trying to learn from. So let's go ahead and see what Copilot comes up with once it's done with investigating this repository. And there we go. We now have a learning guide for Claude Code. And I actually read through this guide while I paused the video recording, and I found something that I thought was quite interesting, and I wanted to learn more about that. So this is an application that is actually running on Node.js, which is JavaScript, right? But I actually found that when I was scrolling for this learning guide, there are elements of this code base which are implemented in Python. You can use hooks inside of Claude Code to actually make sure that commands are validated before they're run by the AI agent. But I was surprised to see that this is all in Python. So actually at this point, I'm very interested to learn more about how this communication works. How is code being handed off to Python when the rest of the application is written in Node.js? Let's actually go ahead and ask that to Copilot and see if we can get an answer to the question to illustrate how easy it is to actually learn how these systems work in depth. So I would ask that question as follows. I want to understand how it is possible that the hooks seem to be written in Python while the app itself is generally in Node.js. Can you investigate how the handover of these function calls works slash how the architecture of the app is built to use these multiple languages? Now, I'm very curious to see what the answer is to this question because I don't even know this myself. And now you get a very clear architecture document that describes how Claude Code is communicating via the Node.js main app to all of these different hooks that can be written in Python, but apparently other languages as well. Because if we read this architectural document, you can see that there is a communication protocol where you simply define the hooks in this JSON object, and you can actually call any kind of command that you want. In this case, this bash command hook is written in Python, but because you can actually execute any command here, you could even have a hook that's written in .NET or in Java. And that's something that I learned by exploring the repository in just a couple of minutes. 
So I hope that this shows you how powerful AI can be for learning today, but you have to use it in the right way, and it's important to start with a very clear example repository. I'm very curious to learn what you're trying to build, so let me know in a comment down below. And if you need any help with building complex AI systems, then I make it easy in my AI engineering community that you can find in the description down below as well. I hope to see you there.